So hello and welcome to Making Up the Magic. I know I've been a bad mother and I'm not really a mother. Well, maybe two orchids, does that count? You let me know. So I am back and I know this video is overdue, very overdue. And I've been neglectful, I know, but I've been on the gram. You know, I know I've been cheating on YouTube with the gram and I just needed to be an actress, just needed to perform characters. So if you go on the Instagram, you'll see I'm just, there's no tutorials, there's no nothing. It's just me playing games, pretending to be other people. Or maybe I'm not, you don't know. It's a Pandora's box. If you're willing to open it, well, I dare you. Today we are doing the full Monty. I mean the whole, not, not the whole, because I already did my face and we're going to just be doing the eyes, which I think is more than enough. Yes, I'm mentally ready for it because it is, it is a difficult makeup. Let's not pretend that it's easy, breezy, cover girl. And I would recommend that you try this on yourself once or twice, take pictures, reconvene, because it's really painting lines on your face. And shocker, you just might find out that you're not symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical. I mean, I know, what a shock, right? Discovering you're not perfect. I know I cried too all night. It was, it was painful. I called my mom. I said, mom, I'm not perfect. And she'll just say, baby, I knew all along. I just, I just didn't want to tell you. <laughs> well, I like to think that's how it happened, but Anyways, now let's move on to the tutorial itself, to the beast, to the 60s twinky eye. The 60s was a rebellion, basically, against anything 50s, 40s, the parents, basically. So what do you do when you rebel? Well, you just don't do things the way your parents did. So no pale foundation, no red lipstick, no blush. In doubt, when doing the 60s, just use peach colors all over your face. You know, that's, that works. And, um, yeah. And not even brows. Like sometimes you see pictures in the sixties and the brows are not even done. Pretty fantastic, right? So it's natural except for the eyes and they're crazy. So if there's a crazy actress inside of you somewhere, well, it's time to let her out. <laughs> Sorry. So today I'm going to be using this wonderful palette by Ashley Strong and Morphe. And I think it's still available on the Sephora website. I checked and it has beautiful cake liners. I'm going to be using the black one and these go on really well. I'm going to be using my favorite palette, drugstore palette, Maybelline The Nudes. They're nude. I mean, for medium to pale people. So I'm going to be using the skin tone shade, taupe, gray, and black shades. And now a few notes on the brushes I'm going to be using. First one is refer number two. It's a flat blending brush. Refer lucky number 13. It's a small, medium buffing brush. Finally, refer number 21. This is a flat packing brush. And just in case you wanted to know, it's always out of stock on their website. Is it any good? Yes. That's why it's always out of stock. And these two liner brushes, they came originally with liners, but now those liners do not exist. But I'm sure you can find something similar. So being the makeup nerd that I am, according to my research, there wasn't any eye primers in the 60s. I know, shocking. There was other tricks to do to prime the eyes. And this is a really old Hollywood trick and even a stage trick. And grease paint, stage paints have existed for a very long time. And makeup artists would use it on the eyes. They would put white on the eyes as a base. In black and white, it's great. You can't really tell and it's very bright. However, in color and especially with 4K cameras, well, who am I kidding? I don't have a 4K camera, but 
with video cameras, um, I would recommend not using white directly on your eyes. So the first step is to apply a primer that's peachy in tone. I recommend. Of course, you can do whatever you want. I mean, I'm just, I'm just being a nerd here. So this is Laying Low by MAC. It's a paint pot, so it sets. I'm not going all the way down because I will be putting the cake liner there and I don't want the products to mix. So I'm just keeping this right here. And now I'm gonna take a bit of the Jumbo Pencil in Milk by NYX. I'm just going to put some in the center just to brighten it. In case you're wondering, this is BH Cosmetics brush number seven. Now, if you want, you can make this very bright and very white. It's gonna create a lot of contrast. I wanna do something that's a little bit more measured. Applying some more. There you go, it's setting. And now for the next step, I'm going to be going into my skin tone eye shade. I'm just going to apply a light coat on my number two refer brush, just to make sure it's all set. So for the next step, I'm going to be using a pastel shade. Now you don't have to do this, but in the 60s and the 50s and the 40s and the 30s, Pastel eyeshadows were extremely popular, and even in the 60s. And in order to set the white base, the grease paint, they would often use a pastel shade or white, depending on the effect that they wanted to produce. I'm gonna use this pastel shade. It's from the Just My Luck palette. It's called Chances Are, so chances are, it's called Chances Are. I'm gonna use this big Sephora fluffy brush, blending brush. So for a collection, limited edition. Now, if you notice, I'm putting it on my lid. If you prefer, you can pull it all the way up. It's really up to you. You can experiment on how you want to do this. Have some fun. The Milk Primer, unfortunately, the Milk Primer, the Milk Jumbo Eye Pencil kind of puts um, a base on top. It makes it harder to put something like a shadow. So you have to really go in hard. And now I'm gonna use the number two refer brush to pack on just a bit more. Like that. Not packer brush, but blending, flat blending brush. So now we've done that. The next step, and I know this is weird, but we are gonna apply the liner. I know people usually want to do the crease first, but I don't understand why, because it is really, really difficult to do the crease when you don't have the other elements of this makeup on. So I'm going to show you another way of doing this. And if you're new at doing this look, it probably will help you as it did help me as well to make something that looked good as opposed to scary. Using the mint eyeshadow kind of helps you to see like reverse eyeline your eyes. I don't know if that makes sense. So now in the 60s, in the 60s, there was no cat eyeliner, okay? It was round, 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 round. We go in the round eyeliner. So I'm suggesting you just follow the natural shape of the eyes that you have, because usually eyes are round. I know, I was surprised about it as well. So I've activated the liner and I'm just going to put a little quantity here. Now it should be fairly thick. And I'm going to try and make it as thick as I can. I'm sorry, I tried to put more foundation, but for some reason it just doesn't want to match up.
and go very gently. Now I've got nice creases in my mature lids, so um, I'm doing my best not to mess this too much. Now what I like about cake eyeliner is really easy to remove compared to liquid eyeliner, especially if it's very, very um, pigmented. It's going to be really hard to, to clean it up. Now, my blind spot is this here because oh, I can't, it's really hard to tell if the thickness is right. I need to take pictures. I'm serious about this. Like, I'm, this is not a joke. It traumatized me the first time I did this liner because it was really intense. And what you're aiming for is really a crescent moon. So you want the height, you want the height to really be right above your pupil. And I don't know if you've ever seen burlesque, but there's a really lovely scene in there where Cher tells Christina Aguilera, of course they're not playing themselves. She tells her that she's doing it all wrong. She shouldn't be using water. She should be using her spit. So. If you have cake liner, go ahead. Try it. I dare you. I haven't tried it. Wow, this one is looking really bad. I should concentrate on doing the liner. Lovely, isn't it? So I'm going to watch this to see if I need to correct the shape and I'm going to do it on my own. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie. It took me a good 15 minutes to even out the lines because of the blind spot that I have here. And I recommend having a brush like this where you can hold your skin taut and I don't want to mess it up, but you just swipe it clean. That's really essential. And especially if you have, like me, more mature lids, I would recommend doing the line a little bit smaller and then finishing it off with some black eyeshadow powder that matches the color of your liner. In this case, I use the black from the Maybelline eyeshadow palette and it matches pretty well. And it also helps to soften the line. So if your liquid eyeliner or your gel, well, gel probably won't do this, but if it's liquidy, it's going to get into little cracks on your lids. So I said the whole thing with black eyeshadow and I'm going to put on lashes, but just on one eye, this eye, and we're going to continue working on both eyes because the lashes really do the look and you really need them. I'm going to be using these LA Flare lashes. So I don't know if you can see, but they're round. So they're going to be like the shape of the eyeliner. So that's really important. Don't do a round eyeliner and get cat eyed lashes. So finally, the magic is coming together. It's like a recipe. You need to put all of those little ingredients together but if you've never put them together, it's kind of hard to know what's going to happen. Honestly, I have so much respect for Twiggy, who would put on this look every morning to go and do her job. Can you imagine having to do this every day, paint art on your face? Now we are going to do the crease. So I'm going to get into my refer number two brush. I'm going to dip it between the taupe and the gray shadow in my Maybelline palette. And now when you're doing this, make sure that you look straight head on, make sure you, you look head on. And 
you need to find the highest point, which is about here. I'm just going to stamp very slightly that shadow. And what you want to do is you want to just echo that shape. And you have to keep it within the liner. So don't try and swoop it out. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. But to really get that authentic 60s vibe and to get that vertical space, you really want to go down and sort of echo the way the shape is going down. So for the other part, I have many options. I could follow my brow bone here and just go there and that would make it more elongated. Something you would see more on someone like Eddie Sedgwick who also wore this look and she was in the factory with Andy Warhol. However, I'm going to make it and Twiggy does it too. It's true. I've seen it in some pictures. So I'm just going to keep blending this. And I'm just going to slowly bring it down here. And again, you don't want to take it further than the inner corner. So I'm just going to keep blending back and forth until you're happy. For an extra step, I'm going to blend the shadow downwards with this number, lucky number 13. I'm going to dip it between the eyeshadow shade and the taupe shade. And I'm just going to take it over and bring it down. Like that. And also make sure that the this crease looks circular and crescent like from the side and from this side. You can also take a smaller brush. This is a tiny brush that I got in a gift set. It, I don't think it exists. I'm going to dip it again between the taupe and the gray shade. I'm just going to come down here and just very lightly define it and make sure also it kind of goes in with your own brow shape. I'm going to go back into the number two between the gray and the taupe and I'm just going to stamp it right above here. So again, make sure from the side that your shape is following. So I'm going to go with the other brush here because I don't feel as confident on this side. And I'm just going to bring it down left to right. That's right. I hope you can hear the birds outside. They're really cute. I feel like Cinderella or no sleeping beauty, sleeping beauty. So, so I'm going to go back. Same technique. Number 13 refer skin tone and taupe. I'm just going to blend this. Well, of course, they don't look alike at all. So you see, you have sort of two different takes on this. This always happens. I don't know why, but you have to be really precise with your brush. So I'm going to go into the brush that I actually wanted to use, which was number 21. I'm going to dip back between taupe and gray. And I'm just going to stamp that darker color. 
right here. So I get a more defined crease. With my wonderful little concealer brush, I'm just going to go in and soften and remove any areas that I don't want the eyeshadow on. So now I'm going to do some finishing touches to this look. I'm going to dip between the taupe and the gray shade and I'm going to use the tiny brush. I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to deepen that up and make it just a bit more precise just here at the edge and here as well and here so it's a little bit more defined and now i'm going to take a tiny tiny liner brush and i'm going to use this product which is essence matte black liner and this is the blackest black eyeliner i've ever used so there's a bit of that product on there and and now we are going to extend the eye in the authorized 60s way right at the inner corner i'm going to draw it down i know it's very counterintuitive everything's going down when other people are telling you to pull it up honestly it's whatever you really want <laughs> So same goes here. We can extend the liner like that. And this will be your first twiggy painted on lash. So we can paint on the next one here. Oops. And the next one here. And the next one here. And the next one here. And here. And we can gonna... so there you go this is what twiggy used to do to her makeup she would really paint on these lashes if you have gorgeous thick lower lash line just plump it up with mascara and make it messy it looks fun do the same on this side so i'm just going to bring it down and thicken it up just a touch that half moon effect touching it up and we're going to do the same here and there you go i'm going to finish the lashes so now that i've painted on the lashes i'm going to put on some radical earrings and a nifty knit sweater and i'll be right back and i'm back and i feel like twiggy i think i am twiggy no maybe not it's okay don't mind me um I'll, I'll just go and have my twiggy life all by myself i don't care what you're gonna say i am i hope you like the the knit the knit is about a year old so you won't be able to find it at all uh, the earrings are by a designer called warren stephen scott he's a canadian he's aboriginal and yes they come in a pair but I'm just wearing one because this whole closed out of business. Uh, I'll put the website down below. He's also on Instagram and all kinds of wonderful colors and shapes inspired by Ida, uh, Ida Art. And if you like this video, click like, thumbs up. If you want to see more vintage content, subscribe. I have some interesting video ideas coming up and yeah i think you know i'm just feeling myself i think i look more like eddie sedgwick but that's okay
I'll, I'll, I'll take that anyways. Have a great week or weekend whenever you're watching this. And I promise I'll be back shortly.